let's work on the notebook 14, introduction to NumPy. We alluded to NumPy earlier when we started working with Pandas. NumPy is one of those fundamental scientific computing, computing library in Python. It has been developed for many decades now. One of the key things that NumPy offers is that it's able to work with data sets as a whole, you know, perform vectorized operation very, very fast. So if you think about any big scientific project that's using Python, likely they're using NumPy under the hood. NumPy is one of the score libraries that everything in Python Geospatial is built on top. When we start working with raster data, we need to understand what NumPy does and use NumPy directly for some of the operations. So let's have a brief introduction to NumPy. So NumPy allows you to work with this objects called arrays. Arrays is, you can think of a list as an array. You can think of a data frame as being represented by array. You can have n dimensional arrays. So NumPy doesn't put a restriction like pandas that I only want two dimensional data. NumPy can work with multi-dimensional data. You can have n-dimensional arrays, and you can do this kind of matrix multiplication and all the other kind of scientific operation that you need to do. For geospatial, NumPy is important because if you read a raster data using any of the libraries, they, you'll get a NumPy array representing the grid of pixel values that we have. So let's see how we can use NumPy. NumPy comes pre-installed. If you install pandas or geopandas, it's one of the dependencies, and you'll be getting NumPy in your environment. So you can just import NumPy. By convention, you import NumPy as NP. So you can run all the NumPy functions with the shorthand syntax NP. The main object you have in NumPy is something called ND array. And this stands for N dimensional array. So you can say NP dot array. This is define this array of from a list. Let's just view this. You can see this is now an array. If I see the type of this, it's a NumPy array. The advantage of an array is if you create a list using Python, the way Python works under the hood is it says, I want a list to create a list of 100 numbers. Python will say, okay, I need to store the first number in the memory somewhere. It'll ask the, the operating system, give me a free memory address. And it's okay, here, this is a free memory address in your RAM, store this first value here. And it'll ask for the second value, the OS will give another, free address and you will store in that. And it's you have 100 items, you have 100 memory addresses that the operating system is assigned to it. So Python has to keep track of what is the value and where it is stored. And now you can say, I want the 90th item. You look up, oh, where did I store it? You'll go to the memory address and read this. What NumPy says is, it says, I want to create this array of four items. It lasts the OS for four consecutive memory addresses. So Give me a place where I can store all fours together. And it'll just store the starting of the memory address and the length of the array. So now imagine you have a million items. It has to store this, the starting of the memory address and the length of the array. And now I can look up the other addresses very, very fast. It doesn't have to go through each item and say, where did I store this? Where did I store the other one? So by putting this restriction that I can have the same type of data in an array and then I can store them in a consecutive array, it can do operations such as I want to divide each item of the array by two. If I want to do this using standard Python list, I would say for x in A, print x by two. Right? I have to iterate through it because Python has to look up each item, find it, and then divide it. In the NumPy world, I can say A by two. And it works in a single operation because it knows that where everything is, just divides it. And by doing this, you have a huge performance gain up to 50x in many operations. And that's the reason Pandas is very fast, GeoPandas is very fast, because it does all this vectorized operation. To take advantage of this, you should not be using for loops. So if you find yourself using for loops when using Pandas or GeoPandas, you're doing something wrong because you're going to not get advantage of all this vectorized operation that NumPy offers you. So when you're doing some operation, try to look for a built-in function to be able to do this. Do not use iteration over each of the items. Otherwise, you'll not get the benefit of that. And this is, again, a common mistake that many people make. You need to kind of come out of this for loops mindset and make sure you, for any data processing, you use the built-in operations. We can also do two-dimensional arrays. So let's say when we read raster data, we'll get an array like this. So this is a two-dimensional array, which is you know one row, Second row, three columns. And once you have your raster data and you read it, each band of raster data will be stored as a two-dimensional array like this. 
same concept applies. If you want to divide this whole thing by two, you can see I can just divide by two and it just works. So all your raster algebra operations will use this operation as well. You can access any item using the same indexing operation. So you can say B of zero, which will give you the first row. B of one will give you the second row. If you want to get the first row and first element, you have to do this indexing twice. Pandas offers you that I lock and lock, but in NumPy, you can just have to do this indexing twice to get the row first and the column value first. One of the things you can do with NumPy is it offers you all those computation functions. Let's say we want to create the sum of all the values. So I want to get the sum of all the values in my array. So one plus two plus four plus three plus four plus five. You can just say b dot sum. This is again different than I take through each element, you know, adding, having a counter, summing it up, and so on. So whenever you want any statistical operation, use the built-in functions. You have b dot mean, b dot max, and so on. When you're doing this, Sometimes you may want to do sum across a specific dimension. So similar to what we saw earlier with pandas, remember this diagram where you can use access to control in which direction your operation will be applied. So axis one is this direction, axis zero is this direction. Let's use this. So here, go and say we want uh, b dot sum most of the functions will also have an axis parameter. So now I can say b dot sum x is zero. What do you think would be the answer? So let's say this is our b. What will be the answer? x is zero. x is zero is going down. What do you think will be the answer? So when we do b dot sum, it'll just give me sum of all the values, but we can also sum along a specific axis. Let's see the answer. You can see now it's a sum of every column because we're going down, right? One, three, two, four, four, five. And you get an array. Understanding the axis is very important. You in NumPy, you can have n-dimensional data, so you can have access up to any large number. With geospatial, typically you will just have two-dimensional grids, or at maximum three-dimensional. You have temporal data, you have XY and then time. So you can work across any of those axes.